Hello, in this video I'm going to show you how to use a metahuman as your main character in any game that you're making um, and replace the third person character, the mannequin that you see in the default project. So if you want to follow along with this project, I'm using Unreal Engine 5.2.1, but you, whether you use 5.2 or 5.1, it'll work as well. So you want to create a new project and use the third person project in Unreal. And then uh, go ahead and import a metahuman of your choice using Quixel Bridge. I've shown this um, a lot in my previous videos, so I don't want to repeat myself. Once you have that, you can go ahead and follow along. Um, I'm going to be explaining every step and the reason why I'm doing everything so you can learn a thing or two about Unreal Engine rather than just showing the steps. Um, I think this is beneficial uh, for you in the long run as you can do these same things with other stuff as well. So let's go ahead and open the third person uh, folder go to blueprints and open the BP third person blueprint. I want to showcase a few things whenever you are going whenever you are uh, making a character move in Unreal Engine, there are four main players um, involved and they're all di related to different aspects of Unreal Engine. The first one is the skeleton and the 3D model of the character. So as you can see in this case we're using the mannequin and the skeleton associated to the mannequin and you can see the skeleton if you click on the mesh um, right here you can see the skeleton associated to this specific asset now if we go and open the if we go into metahumans go to the tray folder or whatever your metahuman name is and open the blueprint associated with it we can see that the first difference is that the metahuman um, doesn't consist of only one mesh, but it consists of multiple different ones. So feet, legs, torso, face. And the main reason that they do that is so that you can animate these pieces separately. That's number one. The second important factor is that you can wear different clothes on the metahuman and it changes their appearance. So if you've played any RPG game or any um, game where you have an inventory and you can equip different pieces of armor, um, this is how they do it. They modularize the body to different pieces and then they can put different pieces of clothing on. So that's the first major difference that you see. The second important aspect is you need logic for the character to move from point A to point B. And that's done through the code that you see in the event graph. You can do this code using blueprints like you see here, or you can actually do it using C++. But we're not going to go into it uh, for now. Just know that that's also a piece of it. And technically, there shouldn't be a difference between the logic of moving a metahuman from point A to point B or, uh, or a mannequin or anything else. The third piece that goes into it is the fact that when, when a character moves from point A to point B, you want it to play a specific animation. Right, so right now when it's standing idle, you want it to play this idle animation. When it's moving, you want it to play the running animation. And then it's when you're jumping, you want it to play the jump animation. And if you press again, click on mesh and come onto the right side, you can see that in the animation window, it's saying to use an animation blueprint. And this is the animation blueprint it's using. Um, the animation blueprint is basically logic that tells it if you jump, play this animation. And one important aspect about animations is that it's it is um it's dependent on the skeleton so all the animations that are for the mannequin will not work with anything else so that's very important the skeleton and the animation go hand in hand and i have other videos um, that i'll put in the description if you want to learn more about that but just keep this in mind so if i just replace a metahuman here um, all the animations for running and stuff like that will not work unless we do something to fix that. The last the last piece is the um, input, right? You want the character, you want the player to be able to, for example, click on W or the forward uh, button on the joystick for the character to move forward. So the input is also important and that's the fourth major piece. So what we need to do is we need to take the metahuman and make it work with all these four different pieces that I told you about. Uh, and we're going to go and do it one by one. So the first thing is that in the third person character, if you see, we have stuff that's not on the, on the metahuman. So for example, in the metahuman, we only have the body and the LOD sync, which is um, 
just two be two pieces here we're not going to go into what the lod sync here is for, for the sake of this video for the third person character you can see you have the capsule you have the arrow component which tells it which way is forward you have the camera and then you have more importantly you have this character movement component which allows the player to move the character so how why does this have it and this one does not the main reason here is if you look at the top right the parent class for the third person character is a character class but the parent class for the metahuman is an actor so what are what are these so in unreal engine anything that you put into the world unreal engine puts it into a bucket of called actors and i think the main reason the way i like to think about it is that they're called actors because they play a role in the world you know one of them could be a prop it could be a piece of rock uh, but it's still playing a role in the world it's like a for environment is for visual effects whereas a character is something that can be controlled by a player and moved around so unreal engine has a bucket specifically for um, objects that can be controlled by a player and it's called a character so what we need to do in order for us to be able to use the metahuman to move around is to change the parent class from actor we can either change it to a character or we can also change it to the third person character so we can inherit all the animations and the log all the animations and stuff that we see here the way you do that is you go into your uh, metahuman so instead of actually changing the main the main metahuman the, the better practice is to go into your metahumans folder and just create a duplicate of the main one in case you mess it up so we just right click duplicate and we are, we're going to call it bp tray main character this is just a good practice i wanted to show it um because you know sometimes you're trying something out and you mess it up and you don't want to like make it difficult to go back to the default one if i mess it up i can just delete this and again create a duplicate so I'm going to open this one up and we're going to change the parent class from actor to the third person character. So we can use the, a lot of the, a lot of the animations and stuff that's there. So we're going to click on class settings and over here, you'll see parent class and you're going to change it from actor to third person, BP third person character. So make sure you change it to BP third person character. And as soon as you do that, you'll see that your left pane here changes a whole lot and you'll see the same elements that you saw in the third person character appear here as well so we have the capsule now the mesh the camera boom we have our original metahuman um the body face everything else and then we also have the lod sync and the character movement so if i click on viewport you'll see that um it's looking a bit odd we have the mannequin and the actual metahuman and the reason for that is because we parented it as for to the bp third person character meaning that we have the bp third person and all the functionality associated with it um, and the metahuman on top of it so let's go ahead and first of all put this metahuman in the right position and then also remove the uh, mannequin so the way we do that is we go into the body this is the metahuman and we grab the body we drag it and put it underneath mesh and this way we let Unreal Engine know that this is the body that we want it to be associated to the mesh. And now we need to relocate the metahuman so that it's in the exact same location as the mannequin that you see here. Um, and we could do this manually by dragging, but that's going to be very painful. There's an easy way to do this. Since we put this under the mesh, we can tell it to default to the same position as the mesh. And the way you do that is you choose body. And on the right side in the details panel, you're going to click these, this reset button right here. So you're going to reset the location and it's going to bring it down. And then you're going to reset the rotation and it's going to change, turn it around to be the exact same rotation as the mannequin. So now that we have that set up, the second step is to uh, remove this mannequin mesh. And the way you do that is you click on the mesh, which is associated to the mannequin. And on, on the top here in the details panel, just search for visible. And we basically don't want the mannequin to be visible. So we just uncheck it here. And voila, we have the metahuman now replacing the mannequin. Of course, he's looking a bit stiff. There's no animation because obviously, as we said before, the animations are for the mannequin and they're not for the metahuman. So we're going to hit compile here. And we're going to have our 
a meta human replacing the mannequin. Right now, if we click play, we're still going to get the mannequin here. And the reason for that is because we need to tell Unreal Engine that the main character of this game is our new character and it's not the mannequin anymore. The way you do that is you open your third person folder, go to blueprints, and beside the BP third person, there is a BP third person game mode. Game mode is in Unreal Engine where, and in other actual um, game engines, is where you define the base rules of the game. One of those variables is who is the, the main character, who is the default pawn class, which you see here. And right now it's set to BP third person character. And whenever the game starts, um, that's what Unreal Engine is going to spawn. And that's what Unreal Engine is going to allow the character, the player to control. So we don't want it to be the third person character anymore. We want it to be what we just created. So I'm going to change it to BP Trey main character. Now I'm going to hit compile and save. And I'm going to start the game and we should see Trey here. But I'm not going to be able to move him around or anything. And he's standing in T-pose. So let's go ahead and fix that. Let's first allow him to move and then we'll fix the animations. So we're going to go to BP Tray main character again. As we talked about before, we need logic for in order to make the character move whenever the player clicks on specific buttons, either on a joystick or on a keyboard. We're not going to rewrite everything uh, because it's already here. So as you can see, we have code here that does the movement for us. We can go into how that works in a separate video because I don't want to make this very long. But we have the code here and you can see here as there is a um, blueprint here which says when whenever we begin playing, do all this logic that you see here. So we're going to copy this code here, all of it. Just drag and click on, drag your mouse and select everything. Right click copy or press control C or command C on Mac come back onto your BP train mat character, go to the event graph. All right, I'm going to move this to here and I'm going to paste it here. Okay. So as you recall over here, it says whenever we begin play to do this logic, when you copy paste it, it since it doesn't know where the event begin play is, it puts a custom event. So you can go ahead and remove this. And then you have a event begin play all the way in the top. So you want to drag that, uh, bring it all the way down, and then connect the HOD L hair LOD setup and connect it to cast to player controls. So basically, whenever we begin playing, we're going to set up the controller for the game. And what, what we mean by that, that we set up the inputs for it. So, you know, if they press W, they can go forward, etc. So once you do that, you're going to hit compile. And you're going to hit save. And now when we go back to the third person map, when we hit play, we can actually move our character um, forward, backward, left and right and jump. But our character has no animations. And that's the last step that we're going to fix. So in a previous video, I'll put, a, I'll put a link in the description. I do explain how it works to retarget an animation from one skeleton to another in detail. And I don't want to repeat it. Uh, because I know it'll get boring for you guys. So I, I highly recommend if you don't know about it, go watch it because I want to show you a very short way of doing it here. So if you choose the body for your meta human, um, on, on the bottom here, you have an option for live retarget. And there is a variable here called use live retarget mode. And what this does is it tells Unreal Engine and the meta human to, um, in real time, like as you're playing the game to retarget any animations that are associated with the UE5 mannequin to the meta human. So on the fly, it transforms um, all those animations back to the meta human, which is really useful. So I'm going to click on this. Um, on the details, if you don't see anything like me, it's because we wrote visible previously. So we're just going to really remove visible and you'll see these two options, variable and default value. You're going to open default value. Um, by default, we're not using retarget, which makes sense because, well, we're not tar retargeting any animation. But we're going to set that to true. And as soon as you do that, if you go into your viewport, you'll see that the your meta human is now in the default pose, um, just like your mannequin was. One other thing that we need to do is since we're retargeting the animations as the player is playing, we need to tell the... Uh, animation to uh, 
refresh the bones and the animations every every frame so that the metahuman can copy it onto itself and the way you do that you click on mesh you're going to again search for visibility and you can see here there's an option a uh, visibility based anim tick option and we want this to it's only set to pose but we want it to refresh bones as well so that our um, live target reanimation um, this live retarget mode works properly so we're going to hit this option right here and we're going to hit compile and we're going to hit save now if we go back to the third person map and hit play you'll see that your character is now in default pose everything looks good you can run you can jump and you have your meta human as your uh, main character i hope that this was helpful and thanks for watching.